What's going on, everybody? We are here with our third installment of the Kingpins Fantasy Podcast. You may notice we have a new member on this week's episode. You'll be seeing a lot more of him. Uh, this is Pat. Uh, Pat, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? All right. My name's Pat. My team's the Giants and the Mets and the Knicks I've not been proud of. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be proud of any of those teams. To be yeah. <laughs> I mean – no, Giants, I mean, I, I am living like eight years in the past to keep some pride. But And then if, if you want some credibility, I mean, last year, I mean, last year is, is an outlier. But I, I finished 10th in my friend's league out of 12, which was embarrassing. Um, before that, I was a semifinalist every year at least. So, And also, uh, this is a pro tip put pineapples on hot dogs i tried it yesterday and <laughs> i will i'm i'm actually gonna be like doing it like forever now and you gotta try it okay um as always we're gonna cap it <laughs> off with a plugging of our social media and website so our social media is on everything peanut gallery hq no dots underscores spaces anything that is our handle on instagram tiktok and twitter our website is peanutgalleryhq.com. Uh, you, if you go there, you'll find uh, a link to these podcasts, some articles, uh, some rankings in the coming days. So, uh, yeah, definitely be sure to check all that out. You don't want to miss any of our content. Um, and let's get into it. So we're going to start with everybody's favorite segment today, Fantasy Tinder. Our first player is – oh, allow me to explain Tinder first. Uh, for those who don't know, swiping left means you do not like the player. Swiping right means you do like the player. And swiping up or super liking means you like the player a lot. Now, we're not just swiping on the player. We're swiping on their um, valuation according to Fantasy Pro's rankings. Our first player today, guys, is Gardner Minshew, currently going at player 160 and QB 24. Where are we swiping? I think I'm going to jump in here first with this one. Um, not just in fantasy, but in life as a whole, I love Who Gardner Minshew. This? Wow. I can tell you with confidence he will be more on more of my fantasy teams this year than any other player. Gardner Minshew is my quarterback this year. Hopefully your backup quarterback. <laughs> I was going to say he's your starting quarterback. Yep. What? Oh. I'm going to wait till around 14, 15, 16. I'm going to scoop up all my talent or all my position players I need. And then around 14, 15, I'm going to take Gardner Minshew and he's going to lead my team to victory. So that's a super like then? That is a super like. He's wow. going as the QB 24 last or right now. He was the QB 20 last season, a season that he didn't start the year as the starting quarterback. He only played 14 games and it was his rookie year. Going into year two, he's going to have a lot more time with the offense. He'll have more time to develop chemistry with the weapons. I think QB 24 is ridiculous. So I'm going to agree with Dan here, but I'm not going to super like, I'm just going to swipe right. And for a bunch of the reasons you just named, that's why I like Minshew. He was the QB 20 playing 14 games, and now he's going as the QB 24. And so it's, I feel like that's just a crazy valuation. Like you, he's definitely going to improve off the QB 20 when he's playing two extra games. But I will say, he will not be my starting quarterback <laughs> in any leagues. Definitely um, not. I, I'm not – the <laughs> offense doesn't excite me. I don't no. have a supporting cast around him that I like. Um, yeah, but I swiped right. It's a good value. I'm also yeah. swiping right just because of, of the crazy low valuation, but – I honestly don't know. Sure, he'll improve because of the two extra games we expect him to play this year. But uh, So I like him. I'm swiping right as a backup quarterback. Um, I would like to point out I am still a huge Teddy Bridgewater guy. I think he is my backup quarterback. And as Dan mentioned, Minchu is a popular uh, persona around the league. I think you might have to reach. I doubt he lasts uh, this long in a draft. Um, and with Bridgewater going after, he's still my guy. I think he's going to be in a better offense and just be going later than Minshew, which I really don't think is right. And honestly, the Jags, 
are almost definitely in a rebuild stage right now. All the key players just won out. Um, and I, I just don't really know that I want to be sinking draft capital into a guy who is a quarterback of a rebuild team. Although there was, there is reason to be excited. You guys have mentioned it. His numbers were pretty good last year and he was a rookie. Um, so I'll still swipe right, but uh, I'm not necessarily looking to take him. Yeah, Ryan, I'm going to have to agree with you that the main reason why I'm swiping is because of his valuation. Um, I mean, I do get some scary flashbacks of uh, Baker Mayfield here. I mean, he, he, was a, he was a hot stud in his first year. They look alike. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd love to lick the milk off that mustache. I think we'd all agree, we'd all agree with that. <laughs> Um, can I, can you guys, uh, you guys agree, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, yeah. So in shoes, yes. Baker's no. <laughs> uh, Baker's a little too dirty. I, I got that Baker. Minute, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, with Jay Gruden as the offensive coordinator here, I mean, Jay Gruden in Washington, he dumped it off to Chris Thompson a lot. They love to go after Jordan Reed. So it's going to be a lot of, a lot of more, a lot more check downs I foresee. But um, I think Tyler Eifert might just crumble down and fall for like the fourth time in his career. He's just – all of his bones are going to explode or something. So, I mean, there's no reliable guy in this offense. I mean, maybe yeah. DD, maybe DJ Chark. I mean, I'm just kind of worried. Um, but he, he did it last year with not too much to work with. So, at this yeah. valuation, it's definitely, definitely a right for me. To that point, um, he's like the Tinder equivalent of a girl who's just – surrounded by a bunch of ugly girls in her <laughs> and that helps her stand out a little bit but she's still not super attractive okay. i mean i like that I for, like for the football team easy. comparison you don't want the ugly girls around you you want to be surrounded <laughs> yeah. by a bunch of <laughs> well yeah but that's why he's currently going 160 he's a team full of ugly girls yeah <laughs> um okay next player uh we are talking some james white player 77 RB 29. Um, I actually will kick this one off, I think, because in my personal rankings, I have white 78. So I am swiping right. It's basically the same valuation. I think it's fair. Um, Obviously, there's reason to be concerned with the Pats D this year, but what is that, round seven? And he was RB 18 last year. I think – Belichick will be playing it safe with Stidham. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of checkdowns, which is basically White's role in this offense. Um, and he wasn't a huge touchdown guy. He had like six touchdowns run between running and receiving last year. So I can't really say I see the offense being bad um, as hurting him all that much. Yeah, he was the um, – you said he was the RB18 last year. The year before that in PPR, he was the RB7. So he has shown like he has that kind of upside. I don't um I don't expect numbers near that, but he is like just a pass catching machine. And I actually have him in my rankings at 72, so I think this is a good value. And I was looking at the running backs going after him. The only player I'd consider was Cam Akers for mm-hmm. the upside. But um if I'm looking for like a safe RB2 flex, I think James White's a good pick here. Yeah, I mean, White is just your classic, not super talented, but you know he has the pass-catching role. You know he's going to catch 60, 70 balls at least, and that's just a safe position to be in. You're not going to get let down with James White. More often than not, you're not going to hit a home run with it. He's not going to be an Austin Eckler breakout type of guy, but he's going to put up points for you every week consistently and, yeah, get the job done. So with James White, I mean, comparing this to Gardner, this is like another situation where around him there's not too many. I mean, Gardner is way undervalued, as, as we've definitely found. But with James White around him, there's not really much to choose from. Like, but I think, I think I have to swipe left just because in the offseason, the Patriots have been focusing in the draft. They went pretty much – all defense, and then they got two tight ends. Dalton Keene out of Virginia Tech, he's going to be blocking. He's going to 
he's going to receive too, so he's going to be like an Aaron Hernandez guy. But I think oh, they, let's, they hope, gave, let's hope not. They gave his, <laughs> okay, no, I'm not talking off the field, dude. Please, no, no. Okay, and they gave the bag to Vital from or Vitali from the Packers. So they're that fullback. They're going to ground and pound, and I see Sony Michelle is going to get a lot more carries. And in the backfield in general, they have a lot of mouths to feed. Damian Harris has to get some love at some point. And Rex Burkhead is lurking, as always, with those weird beady eyes. He's like a <laughs> fucking reptile. And I, I think they, they got too many mouths to feed. But I, I do see what you guys are saying in swiping right because there isn't – the running backs around, there's not really much safety – yeah, I, and my my question to you is: Yes, there's a lot of mouths in that locker room, but do you think there's any chance that anyone is going to take the pass catching job from James White? I, I mean, I just think, I don't. I think he's going to be the lead pass catching back, but they're just not going to throw the ball as much. I mean, Stidham Stidham is inexperienced, and he will be checking down in the in the passing game a lot but Sony Michelle improved his receiving numbers from year one to year two and I think he's just going to be it's going to be less of a committee this year uh from my eyes now I also have a question about the mouths in the locker room are you uh discouraged by the fact that none of those mouths are kissing Tom Brady's son this year um I mean it, it is it is painful to see that because that yeah. kid that kid I mean Growing up at a young age, you're used to getting a lot of love, um, a lot, a lot of facial love, a lot of, you know, right, right, sweet on the sweet little kisser. I mean, yeah, every yeah. time you feel it, like twelve times a day, I'd say Tom Brady would just go up into his son's room and say, uh, "Son, I mean, I love you," and he's mm-hmm. like, "Dad, you you did this twenty minutes ago, like, chill." <laughs> so uh, it is going to be a big change, but. Um, Belichick is Belichick is used to any situation. I mean, there's yeah. definitely in the in the 1940s something like this happened, and he has the experience. So, how did right. can I ask? How did that <laughs> meme start? I forget what started the Tom Brady. He posted a video the of video, him yeah, of him the kissing lips. his oh, son. So he did this to himself. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just a weird dude. Yeah, but it's, it's like a family just... thing. There's there's videos of his dad kissing him. Oh, there really? wins the Super Bowl <laughs> on the lips. Yeah, like a seventy-year-old right. man kissing a thirty-five-year-old man. It's not just that Tom kissed his son; it's how awkward the whole thing was. Yeah, Tom like goes in for it, and his kids like, or no, Tom's lying down, so his kid goes in, and Tom like pulls his head. Uh, it's just, yeah, all right, just Danny, so Danny. uncomfortable. You remember exactly how they were placed? Did you watch that video uh, <laughs> repeatedly to make to? I wouldn't that be one? surprised. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I would not be surprised. Yeah, um, Dan has that. Dan has that video saved. In I'm it. an analyst. <laughs> I need. I need to watch the replays. You know, make my analysis, review the film, see really how Tom's hands are looking heading into next season. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we hit our next player, Dan, I want to thank you for trying to get this Starbucks sponsorship off the off the ground. Don't think I didn't notice. Keep fresh. <laughs> All right, our next guy, Debo Samuel, player sixty nine, wide receiver thirty one. Where are we swiping on Debo? Um, so I'm I'm swiping up on Debo. I've got a super really? like for Debo wow. Samuel. Yeah, so he's the wide receiver thirty one, correct? being drafted as Mm -hmm. so last year he was the wide receiver 31 in fantasy as a rookie playing 15 games and that was also with Emmanuel Sanders who is now gone I think he's the oh am I frozen or is everyone frozen cool (laughs) <laughs> I think Ryan's open. Ryan, you're, All right, now you're, you're good. good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. He's back. All right, there we go. All right. Brief technical difficulties. Um, there we go. Happens. Yeah, so the last <laughs> eight there. games of the season, he averaged 16 points per game. And that was when his snaps finally saw, like, an uptick. 16 points per game in the last eight games. And the last thing I'll say is that in the Super Bowl, just watching him, he was explosive, and they were trying to get the ball to him any way they could. They got it through the air. They gave him some carries. I think he's an explosive player, and I, I 
as the number one in that offense. I know it's a run-heavy offense, but I still could see him finishing top 20. And wide receiver 31 to me is a steal for Debo Samuel. I'm going to have to disagree with that. I, I'm swiping left. Uh, he was 31 last year, and that's true. And I could see why you would think being the wide receiver one and another year of experience would boost that. But Emmanuel Sanders in his stint as the uh, Niners wide receiver one finished wide receiver 34 over that nine or 10 week stretch, whatever it was. Well, I mean, Debo in that, I don't know what he placed in that eight game stretch, but he was averaging 16 a game. That must have been top 15 numbers. Yeah, I'm just not sold on receivers in this offense. I If Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't known for just being an overall hunk and banging porn stars, I feel like he would be getting at most a Kirk Cousins level of respect. Um, I, I just feel like the recipe in San Fran is that they play a great defense and then they run the ball out and burn some clock. Uh, Marquise Goodwin isn't there to take the top off. I mean, he's a literal track star. Um, and there's just not a huge commitment to passing the ball. I am not thrilled about this pass attack at all. And while I think 31 might be a fair valuation, I think the odds of him getting any higher are just not that good. I'm, I'm uh, looking for some more high upside players at that range. All right, so I feel the need to jump in here. I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying I am swiping right on Debo Samuel just because – he was the wide receiver 31 last year. It's another year in the system. He's going to keep progressing. He will improve. But the fact that neither of you have mentioned George Kittle and the fact that he is the number one pass catcher in this offense and any okay. other statement is just absurd. Where was George I'm... Kittle those last eight weeks? <laughs> the last eight weeks of the last season, where was George Kittle? <laughs> he was there. He was being best tight end in football. Yeah, uh, Niners love him. They're going to keep feeding him the ball. He's the number one target in San Fran. And you guys neglected to mention uh, their first round receiver, Brandon Ayuk, uh, yeah. who I don't think will have a huge role in this offense right off the bat, but he is definitely going to take away some looks from Debo. I don't know. But no that, more than Emmanuel I, did, though. That's why yeah. I left it out. I, I think – in this position, this is a lot different than the running back situation because there's not really much to work with around the James White area. But in this area, I mean, you could go some players that are ranked behind Debo right now. Hollywood Brown, he's mm. a rookie last year who's also going to trend up. Um, Gallup, I mean, even though they, they picked up C.D. Lamb, there's still a lot of room for him to grow. Uh, Cooks in – uh, the Texans offense, they lost Hopkins. There's a lot of targets to come his way. And then Christian Kirk, his relationship with Kyler Murray is only going to grow. But I think with Debo, because you made a great point about Marquise Goodwin, I think I, I swipe right because Marquise Goodwin pr had so many over-the-top targets. And, I mean, that's all going to go Debo's way. They're, John Lynch is clearly looking at the offense, and he emphasized that. I mean, even though they went Javon Kinlaw first, they still went Brandon Ayuk like yeah. 10, 12 picks later. So I think they're, they want Debo to get over the top, and Brandon Ayuk is going to force this, uh, the safeties from focusing on Debo too much. And in a, a second-year wide receiver, they're going to grow from their first year. Debo did not look like a rookie last year. He looked like a grown-ass man. <laughs> he was just putting his nuts all over every mm -hmm. defense's face in the playoffs. So. Yeah, last thing I'd like to say here is that um, all those receivers you just mentioned, I'm I have D. I think Debo is on another tier than all of them. Like Hollywood Brown has what? Kind of, yeah, I have in my rankings especially show that uh, I have Debo closer to the McLaurin tier, um, and then I have a drop, and then I have Marquise Brown because Brown to me is just unproven. Cooks, I'm not. I don't know about Cooks. He's just so injury prone. Cooks yeah. is in my rankings. He's like in the eighties. I don't love any of those. Uh, Kirk as the number two in Arizona. Kirk if, was the only one I wouldn't over yeah, like yeah. wholeheartedly agree with being over Debo. Yeah, I I wasn't necessarily. I I'd say those players have better value than Debo. Not necessarily take them over Debo, but I just think in their positions, I think I'd rather take them because the wide receiver is so deep pretty much every year. 
I'm with Tom there. I think Devo is definitely a step above, especially. So you're not worried at all that not a single Niners wide receiver broke wide receiver 31 last year. One of them was wide receiver 31 last year. And that person was a rookie and I expect him to progress and be more involved and do better than that next year. And you just got to look at these last eight games. Like he was exploding when he was finally getting like hot, really high snap percentages, he, he averaged 16 a game. Look at the numbers. He's gonna be he's gonna be a stud this year. I just don't trust the pass uh, the passing attack in San Fran. I don't know. All right, all right. I mean, if I were to give it a Tinder equivalent, um, for those who don't know, Tinder you get a certain amount of swipe rights and then you get locked out for 12 hours if you do not pay. And obviously I do not pay because if you pay for Tinder, there's something wrong with you. (laughs) Um, So sometimes if you're trying to swipe on a daily basis, you want to knock out all your swipe rights before you go to bed. And then that 12 hours is mainly while you're asleep. And then you just wake up and you're swiping again the next day. So I have found many a time myself laying in bed, wanting to go to sleep, but thinking, Oh, I probably have like 10 swipe rights left. Let me just bang these out so I don't wake up tomorrow, swipe right five times, and get locked out for 12 hours. So I picture the late rounds of the draft as me just trying to bang out swipe rights. And I will swipe right on a five or a six level girl because it's late, (laughs) because I just want to be done with it. So a man... uh, Debo Samuel, I could see myself drafting, but I just think that there are better things around him. And I just don't really see um, any upside. I think he's a girl who's clearly a five or six. And if he was hotter, he would look hotter than a five or six in his pictures. Because girls are not going to post their most mediocre pictures. I think he's maybe so much upside. <laughs> maybe the first half of last year, he was a, a five or a six, but that second half, Trending towards an eight, nine. An eight, <laughs> nine. I think Ryan's on Tinder oh. too much. That's what I tell yeah, him. I, I actually so. haven't used it in like four days, but wow. back, back, in days. The, back in my prime, yeah, I was definitely on, <laughs> on a grind. Long ago in Ryan's prime, <laughs> the age of 12. All right, and now to my personal hero and greatest player in the league, Mike Kosicki at player 116, tight end 12. Where are we swiping? I mean, I feel like you should be starting us off. I could start us off. Robo need himself. I own Mike Gesicki in our dynasty league. He is, if anyone gave him the love he deserved and made his ass a bobblehead, I would own it. But those just don't exist for some stupid reason. I think tight end, so he finished tight end 12 last year, which is where they have him. Um, And in the weeks without Fitzpatrick, he wasn't great. So, but when Fitzpatrick was around, he was better than tight end 12. Um, so I feel like tight end 12 this year is his floor. That was as a second year player last year. He will improve. Um, even if Fitz loses the job, which what I just said could make that sound worrisome. I'm not concerned. Last week we mentioned young quarterbacks love finding um, their big beefy tight end almost as much as Dan loves some big beefy tight ends. Um, (laughs) And I just think that uh, I uh, see a lot of, uh, a lot of upside. I think, like I said, tight end 12 is the floor. I have him in my rankings as pick 73, I think tight end seven. And I feel like that's a much more fair valuation, but if he is there at pick, what is it? One sixteen. I mean, I'm going nuts. That that would I, be live. I personally, my comparison to Mike Gesicki and the reason why I'm swiping left. Uh, oh, I'm super it, liking, it's, by the way. Th- this isn't a female comparison. This is for all you Moneyball watchers out there. There was that one guy. I don't know his name. He was that big hunker. He hit the fastball. <laughs> like 500 feet every time. And then when the curveball came, he couldn't handle it. I, I see this as Mike Kosicki. He handles the easy pitches and he knocks them out of the park. And let, let's look at his uh, game logs for the last six games last year. So he had five touchdowns in his last six games. Okay. Mm-hmm. The, that Eagles game, I mean, the Eagles secondary was not 
something that an Eagles fan would be proud of that no. game. It's not, it's not, yeah. Mike Kosicki, he, Nightmare fuel. What, he was just stepping on a, oh, I, I don't want to say anything about dogs. All right, never mind. <laughs> um, with, with the whole, I just watched the Michael Vick uh, 30 for 30 recently. Damn. Okay. Um, he had one catch for six yards against the Jets. And then Giants have a, have a weak secondary. And uh, they, he had four catches, 47 yards. He popped off against the weak Bengals, six catches, 82 yards, two touchdowns. And then that, the one outlier, four catches, 34 yards, and a touchdown against the Patriots. That was Fitz Magic. I think he, he would have done poo-poo if Fitz Magic didn't have his beard grown out like fucking Santa Claus at that point. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm kind of in between you two guys. I, I like Gesicki. I don't love Gesicki. I, um, but I think the evaluation here is pretty fair. Like I, and I like him there. I would probably have him a little bit higher in my rankings. He's 114. So pretty similar. So that's just barely improving at all on last year. If, yeah, I'm, like by one or two points. <laughs> well, I don't know that that where like where did he finish? He finished twelve last year. Wow. So I think as a tight end, I have him as like tight end ten. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I I definitely have him higher than tight end twelve. And to me, they didn't really add too much at the skill position players. The one player name I will mention is Preston Williams is coming back from the IR so he could steal some receptions there but they didn't really do much in the draft that worries me about Gesicki and I I like him as a a tight end 10 maybe someone I like a little more a little later in the draft Hayden Hurst but um Gesicki's a he could be a he could be a top 10 tight end this year I think I find myself somewhere between the Ryan and Tom where the idea of a super like, it did cross my mind. I'm a big Gusecki guy. Uh, I did already use my super like on Gardner Minshew and I'd like Gardner a lot more than I like Gusecki. But I still am a fan of Gusecki. I think tight end 12, assuming he's healthy, is pretty much his floor. And I think he has a lot of potential as a really talented young player to exceed that and really have a good year next year. Did we say we can only use one super like per show? No, but two yeah, that's, super yeah. liking on half of my picks. That feels excessive. I mean, if people are wrong in their rankings, people are wrong in their rankings. Fair. I just didn't yeah. know if I missed that point. <laughs> I think we should hold it to the, uh, the one super like a day. We should, okay. we should hold it to. We're not going to be paying Tinder for ass. Tinder gold out here. That's pathetic. <laughs> All right. I suspect Dan. Dan needs to get his fix. And- yeah. Uh, so if I were to give a Tinder equivalent though, I would say Mike Asicki is a girl who is my type, which we don't really need to get into who, like what my type is, but like, (laughs) even if she's worse than her pictures, she's got the attributes I like, she's got a solid music taste. I mean, even if, like I said, the profile is a little generous, he's cute at the very least. Um, but judging by what I've seen, he could be hot. Just to clarify, by the way, Ryan's uh, type is big teeth, bigger ears. Nice. (laughs) Call them rabbit girls. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So that just about wraps up Fantasy Tinder. We're going to move into a little uh, less formal uh, segment here. It's our favorite and least favorite fantasy players of all time. Anybody want to start us off? I'll kick it off. Um... If you've been in a league with me, you know um, about my love for Keenan Allen. <laughs> He's been <laughs> one of my favorite players. Um, I don't really know why. <laughs> <He's just laughs> I drafted him three straight years in a row. He's just – he's my guy. He's a PPR machine, and I just – I wish I owned him in the Dynasty League. I just he's love crazy him consistent. Now. I got to say, honestly, Tom, that's commitment to your favorite player right there. I know you drafted him the year that he went down halfway through week one. Yeah. Got like a third <laughs> round pick the on whole the guy year. lost a whole season. He missed he the whole year that year, play. Dan. And guess what? Next year, he was on the board second round. I scooped him up. <laughs> that's, that's a commitment I just wouldn't have. I'm, I'm all about it. I love the Keenan Allen love. All right. How do we want to do this? Do we want to give all of our likes and dislikes or just? I say we each give a like, 
then we each give a dislike, and then we each give a like. Okay. Anybody got a, a like? So then I guess I'll jump in with my like. It's the number one pass catcher on the San Francisco 49ers, tight end George Kittle. We saw that coming. Yeah. Um, no, there wasn't much hiding this. He's my favorite player in the NFL right now. He's my favorite player on any of my fantasy teams. Um, I drafted him in, I believe, the fourth round of our Dynasty League startup last year. The year before that, I drafted him in the last round of my redraft league and greatly enjoyed the season he had. Um, For two years now, I've just been sitting, watching him tear defenses apart, get target after target, and just be a machine. I've been loving it. I love me some George Kittle. All right, Patty boy. I'm going to have to go with um, the sacrificial lamb of my 2014 season. It was Percy Harvin. (laughs) Um, it what it wasn't really what he did on the field that uh, makes me love him so much. But uh, my only championship year, um, it was a dim year at running back, and I had Antonio Brown who set three Steelers records. He had like 129 catches, 1700 yards, 13 touchdowns, all franchise records. I had Odell's rookie season. In 12 games, he had 90 catches, 1300 yards and like 10 touchdowns. They were both carrying me every single week. I needed some running back stability. And I sacrificed Percy Harvin, and uh, his head was chopped off. It rolled away very slowly. But uh, Mm. what what had formed on top of that? It was Mark Ingram. And Mark Ingram (laughs) – Mark Ingram (laughs) – <laughs> I, I'm I'm just telling you what I got. I got Mark Ingram. He did not have a great last three weeks. He had 11. I I had to look back at this. He had 11, 13, and 13. Not impressive, but it was so much better than what I had before. Monte Ball was dead at that point. I oh my him. god, I, throwback. I drafted him. I drafted him the first round the year he had the groin injury in like week four or five, and I needed some stability. And Mark Ingram was that. And Percy Harvin wanted to be on a championship roster, but I, I had I had to sacrifice him. Pat, can you uh, let the listeners know what your team name was? <laughs> yes, my team. What the greatest fantasy football team name I've ever heard. I haven't heard anything better. Percy gives no mercy in the playoffs. <laughs> I st- I stomped on my opponent's throats and I did not give up. Respectable. Um, <laughs> as any uh, return listener knows, I am the champion currently of our dynasty league. And a large part of that was due to my savior, Aaron Jones. Got him in the fourth round of our startup. And he was strong all season. He had finished as the RB2. He was fun to watch all the time. I had Devonta Adams as well. I loved me some Packers games. Um, but what really sealed the deal, made him my team MVP for the season. Um, I was at one Dan Marks' house. Watching week 16 uh, as I faced a friend of ours in the finals and Aaron Jones against the Vikings. I was down like 20 going into the game. I had uh, Devontae and Aaron Jones. He had Thielen who put up a fat zero. So maybe he's one of my favorites too. (laughs) Um, And Devontae's doing good, but it was basically neck and neck. And there was still enough time that if Thielen caught like a 10 yard touchdown, there was like no coming back. But the Packers have the ball around midfield. Jones looks like he's about to get a three-yard rush and emerges from the pack, takes it down the sideline for 56 yards. I'm on my knees. I'm doing this. Dan (laughs) congratulates me on a title one because at that point it was all but but finished. All-time great moment. I love me some Aaron Jones. A little disclaimer for Aaron Jones dynasty owners. Sell the guy while you can. No. The values I never will. He will retire on Team Swish, oh, Swish and the Swamp Rats. And um, speaking of our Dynasty League, is it okay if I get in with another player I love, or are we going dislike? You can just follow your little Tom. heart's content. Okay, Tom. well, a player on my Dynasty team who I drafted in, I think, the fifth round last year, Chris Godwin. Um, very predictable. I'm, yeah, very <laughs> I love Chris Godwin, and I've loved him since he was at Penn State. Um, I'm I'm just going to do a little humble brag here. I called his breakout. I I made a bet with Ryan (laughs) that he would finish above Mike Evans, 
Ryan owned Mike Evans, and Chris Godwin did didn't just finish above Mike Evans. He finished as the wide receiver two in fantasy. Um, on Sleeper, where we have our dynasty league, you can have uh, you can have a little nickname for the player. And my nickname for Godwin is "Don't even try to offer me something because he will not <laughs> be traded. I will not trade Chris Godwin." As Ryan just said, Aaron Jones will retire on the Swamp Rats. Chris Godwin will retire on Team Fly Eagles Fly Three. <laughs> that's a and George Kittle that's will a retire team. on Dan's Fantasy Funky Bunch. <laughs> All right, Dan, like or dislike? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll stick with Tom, throw out another player who I love, and that's Antonio Brown. Off the field, <sighs> I hate him just as much as the next guy. He's an imbecile. He's a lunatic. I don't get it, but my God goodness is the man good at football i have won two fantasy championships in my life none in the dynasty league which devastates me and is the only thing that matters to me but antonio brown was a key piece on both of those teams he was just he's such a fun player to watch when he's good you know the ball is coming to him when the steelers were in the red zone and he just caught touchdown after touchdown made amazing catch amazing player after amazing play Antonio Brown might be the most fun I've ever had watching a fantasy football player my own. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to make the the lights a little more dim and go with someone that I hate because there's so much positivity radiating right. radiating out for A B. Joseph Foria. You may not know the name, but when I was about five years ago on Thanksgiving morning. I, I looked I looked this on at the waiver wire to see who was available because Joseph Foria is always there. He will always be there. No one will ever have them him on his on their roster because he is so bad. But I wa- I wanted some something to root for at the twelve thirty game for the Lions. And I put in Joseph Foria and he did awful. It just sounds like your fault. <laughs> I mean, it, it might be, but he's he's a six eight. He's just he looks like the the fox like Megatron guy. He looks like a fucking robot. And I I was like, yeah, this guy's just gonna go fucking off Thanksgiving. He's gonna eat all the turkey legs. That I okay. think they're playing the Bears, but it it, it did not work out unfortunately. Um, I I'm in the mood to continue the hate train. If I could kill, if I was in a room with Hitler bin Laden. <laughs> And Allen Robinson, and I had two bullets. I'm no. shooting Allen Robinson twice. No. <laughs> Fuck Allen Robinson. Fuck no, Allen Robinson. No, After his that. big ass season, I drafted him, blows an ACL, I think, something like that. I'm like, okay, I didn't get my fair share of Allen Robinson time. I'm owed some good Allen Robinson. Draft him his first year on the Bears. Second round, I think he was my wide receiver one. Awful. Finished as, like, the wide receiver, like, 23 or something. Just unrootable. And I even, like, benched him one or two weeks just to maybe get his head right, put some discipline in him. And those were the weeks, some of his best weeks. And I, I just – I couldn't do it. A friend of ours drafted him in the Dynasty startup. I was like, you're screwed. Fuck Allen Robinson. And now he's good again. He just <laughs> is only good when I can't have him. Um, so I will be staying away if anybody owns him out there, which means you should expect good things from him. I think he'll be good this year, but I just can't put myself through it anymore. Yeah, Allen Robinson is another player I hate. And I know, Ryan, you'll remember this. Yeah. There was a day, I looked back to this. Me and Ryan went to an Eagles game together. They played the Panthers, and they were up 17 nothing going into the fourth quarter. And the Panthers rallied off three touchdowns to win and you might wonder why why does Allen Robinson connect to this well me and Ryan both owned Allen Robinson that year (laughs) and we just we were so mad at the Eagles but we were also just mad at Allen Robinson we just hated him (laughs) I just remember I actually looked back he had a good game that day he had like 17 (laughs) points really what are you trying to say why did you why were you thinking about him after yeah, that, that half half time, well, because like, my dad didn't want to pay for parking, so we parked like two miles away and walked it. And the whole walk, we were like, Allen Robinson has been a fucking disappointment all season. <laughs> and But he had a good game that day. But no, we were still mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> we were pissed. 
Um, yeah, so Alan Robinson, I hate you, but yeah. I love you this year in fantasy. I think you'll have a great year. That's that's weird, Tommy. Penn State guys, opposite, yeah, opposite that's true. feelings about <laughs> both of those guys. I should like Alan Robinson. He was a Penn Stater. I guess I'll jump in with the player I hate, and it's Joseph Foria. No, I'm, I'm just I've never heard of that clown. It's actually Derek Henry, someone who I've never owned in fantasy before. But I don't know about you guys. I'm somebody who will I will make my mind up on a player, and that's it. It's decided. And from day one in the NFL, I decided I don't want Derek Henry. I don't think he's good. I don't like it. I'm not yeah. going to draft him ever. And I've stuck to that. And he's proved me wrong. I mean, last season, Derrick Henry was amazing. Like, fantasy-wise, he doesn't catch a lot of passes, but he was just such an amazing runner. And it made me so damn mad. And the more I see him succeed, the more convinced I am I will never draft him. And <laughs> the more it makes me hate him, some players get my blood boiling. And Derrick Henry is one of them. Yeah, yeah he's... He's got that weird – I forget what Star Wars character it is, but he's got that weird, like, thing crawling out of his helmet. It's, he <laughs> thinks it's hair, but it's – there's some Star Wars Beehive. character. Yeah, I don't even – piece even. of shit hanging out the back of his head. It's like a damn turd. <laughs> Fat fucking <Whoa>. log. <laughs> All right, Pat, you got another? All right, yeah. I mean, I, I am a Giants fan, which I stated early in the episode, but – uh. Odell Beckham Jr. He he let me down last year. I wow. took him I took him pretty high, like six or seven overall. Uh, he was he ended wide receiver thirty or thirty one, and um, I just think back to that Dolphins Monday night game. Um, I was about to experience my first playoff loss with my friends, and Odell caught an eighty yard touchdown. And uh, he, he ended that game with, like, six catches, 120 yards, two touchdowns, insane game. And then, obviously, I fell in love with him as, the year before that, his rookie year. Um, he was my favorite giant. And then, I mean, the thing that made me lose my love for him off the field along with – on the field, I still have it. Off the field, in the LSU locker room, after oh. the game, he's, like, fucking around with the security guard. He didn't even get arrested, like – did you guys see what he was doing? Slapped he was him like, on the yeah. ass. Yeah, like that's just not allowed. You can't allow that respect, and that that's just ego. Um, and he's always saying shit about the Giants. I mean, the Giants traded him because they needed help on defense and because he was weighing them down mentally. It's just mm-hmm. a struggle with him every game. But I think talent like that wins out. He's bred to be a performer. He was. He could have been an Olympian in soccer. His mom was an Olympic track athlete. I mean, he's got – He's got like talent that most people, like most humans, just never go near. And yeah. uh, I think I'm I'm not going to give up on him. But when the Browns play the Giants this year, I think it's going to shift, and I'm going to lose any love for him that I have remaining. Yeah, I bet he pulls some shit that game <laughs> for sure. Um, to, uh, Terrell Owens uh, kneel on the yeah. Logo. Or I don't know. <laughs> is it a home game? Do you know? I um, think it's in New um, York. Yeah, uh, that would... it, I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's in New York. I'm not I'll check right now. All right. I actually was I'm tempted to go with Arian Foster. He was my first love in fantasy, but I'm I'm now I'm in the mood for some Mike Gasicki, honestly. <laughs> now, in our dynasty startup, we kind of underestimated how long the draft would take. It was what, like 20, 22 rounds? Yeah. And so I was hosting the draft at my house and around like round 13, it had already been like three hours, which was longer than any of us had expected. And I had to go to work. I work at an ice cream shop. So everybody was like, all right, let's go. So we continued the draft while I was at work. Everyone just crowded into the shop. I'm drafting while I'm making milkshakes (laughs) and I'm not really paying attention. And I had listened to podcasts and done a ton of research and I had heard that Mike Kosicki was a guy to watch. And so in the 17th round or yeah, 17th round, I draft Mike Kosicki and everybody starts cracking up and they're like, I'm like, what? And they're like, that is your fourth tight end. And I go, I, I just haven't been paying attention. I was just taking the, 
the top guy on the board every time I could get, because people kept coming in. It was a busy day. I, and I was like, oh, well, Mike Kosicki going to win me this league. Now, f- fast forward, week 16, same finals where Aaron Jones secured it for me. Final score, I won by like 12 points. Now, my, I have Evan Ingram, but he was hurt. So my options at tight end were Kyle Rudolph or Mike Kosicki. Mike Kosicki had 23.6, I think, that week. And um, Kyle Rudolph had like 1.3. So the decision to draft and start Mike Kosicki literally won me the league. And wow. I, I love him for it. Yeah. I think. All right. Anybody have anybody else? I remember I once said that Lamar Jackson was going to win me a league or save my season or something. And Ryan, you gave me quite a bit I, of shit for yeah. it. So I want to hear about your great <laughs> predicting of the future. Yeah, but that was before he was like Lamar Jack. That, that was, was rookie. rookie. It was year. his rookie year. It wasn't his sophomore year, but he was still a good fantasy quarterback. Still ran for a whole heap of yards. Yeah. All right. Everybody exhausted their favorites and least favorites. Yes, sir. All right. Now to the part I am most excited for. I will be going around asking these three what they can remember from random NFL games. Now, Tom, it just worked out as an Eagles fan. Dan is a Bills fan. Pat is a Giants fan. So I will give them each one game from the not-too-distant past, and they have to tell me as much about it as they can. Uh, I'm going to get some paper so I can tally up some scores. Everything they can tell me is a point, but if it's clear, it's like like you don't really remember, say, if it was home or away for the Giants or whatever. If you're just guessing and you get it wrong, I will dock you a point because I don't. I want you to say things you know. I don't want shots in the dark. Um, okay, shall we kick it off? I, a little disclaimer: we were not supposed to look at schedules, so oh, they know none um, of this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's gonna be tough. So we did not get to like study before this and like give ourselves a. Ch- it's just gonna be out of the dark, random game. And some, be excited because a loser will get nine eggs, three from each of us. <laughs> Hurled at their naked back. <laughs> I didn't know it was nine. Nine. I thought it was three each. <laughs> right, it three I guess we're doing nine. We're doing, we're doing nine, nine now. I already <laughs> gassed the crowd up. Um, okay. And uh, you can look forward to that video on basically every platform we have and maybe attached to the end of this video. We'll see. Um, okay. We'll start with Dan. This Good. is December 31st, 2017. Bills versus Dolphins. Okay, so let's think. 2018 would have been the first, would have been the year they made the playoffs. December of 2017. So no, that was the first year they made the playoffs. So that was the week, the same week that the Jaguars, Jaguars, the Bengals beat the Ravens in week 17 to clinch a bill as a playoff spot. Kyle Williams lined up as fullback in that game, ran in a touchdown. This was in Miami. The Bills won. And the Bills all watched it from their uh, locker room. Watched the end of the Bengals game from the locker it room. It was in Miami. Um, it was, there was a Kyle Williams one yard touchdown. Uh, what else did you say? The Bengals beat the Ravens that week. Sure. Off of a Tyler Boyd Bills season saving touchdown. My great favorite sports moment ever. And you watched that game or at least right after that game, you came to my house to pick me up for a New Year's Eve party. You have a score prediction? Yeah. (sighs) This one, if you get it wrong, it will not dock you a point. It was it's not a 50-50 shot. Kind of close, but not super close. I'm going to 24-17. No, 22-16. What? I was pretty yeah, good. That, yeah. let's, let's, let's give him, right, let's give him a little love on that. That was close. Um, oh, my God. Do you know anybody else who scored that game? Or I would honestly be impressed if you can tell me either quarterback who played for the Dolphins that day. Either quarterback. Two of them. 
I would have thought Tannehill, but the fact that you seem surprised makes me think it's not Tannehill. It is not Tannehill. Pretty fit. I don't know. But can I give it a give it a whirl? Are we doing steals? No, this this might not oh. be valid for any okay. points. Okay, no points, see. but you have a guess. Go for it. Um, Brock Osweiler, oh, Matt Moore, David Fails, and Jay Cutler. Wow, oh, Cutler! Wow, <laughs> Jay Cutler. Yeah. Dolphins. Okay, so that would be a three pointer unless you have something else for me. Nothing. I feel confident enough in the. Okay. <laughs> Like I said, Bills won 22-16 later in the day. Bengals clinched them a playoff spot for the first time in Dan's lifetime. Um, the Bills started scoring with a 26-yard pass from Tyrod to Nick O'Leary. Leary. Uh, Steven Hauschka knocked in two after that to make it 13-0. Uh, Kyle Williams drove in a, another six, but then they failed a two-point conversion. Then Dolphins kicker Cody Parkey, one of my – maybe he's my favorite player ever, actually. <laughs> Double doing. Makes it 19-3. Hauschka makes it 22-3. Jarvis Landry catches a pass from Fails. They fail the two-point conversion. And then uh, David Fails has a one-yard rushing touchdown. Cody Parkey extra point. Was in Miami, as you said. We now go to Tom, I think. Yeah, Tom's next. We have Eagles versus Giants on September 24th, 2017. That is week three. Eagles versus Giants. All right, so you give Dan arguably the most memorable day as a Bills fan in recent history. I promise you this is fair. I was going to say, oh, I, week three. Oh, yeah, I, oh, I remember oh, this game. Oh, yes. Yes, I know this game. Okay, week three. <laughs> so... Week three. This was the year we won the Super Bowl. Um, 2017, you said? Okay. Um, well, this was Jake Elliott hitting the 61-yarder. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake the Giant Slayer. The play before that, Alshon Jeffrey caught a pass with, like, one second left. It was like the Eagles were at, like, the 30 or, so, or like, the 40 maybe, and then – Wentz threw a dot to the sideline, and Alshon got out of bounds with, like, a, literally a second left, I'm pretty sure. I'm checking on the second thing. I know the pass you're talking about, but if the second is correct, that will give you a point. Oh, um, come on. That's hey, a, hey, I know the play that happened up. before. Um, Carson Wentz made a bet, bet his game check. Ooh. Um, Wait, what, was the, what was the bet on? I don't remember that. He bet – Oh, he didn't tell Jake Elliott. He sell, He told um, another Eagles player, it might have been Chris Long, that he – It was Chris Long. Give Elliott – it was who? It was Chris Long. That's, that's brilliant. That's a point right there. Um, <laughs> he, told, <laughs> he told Chris Long he'd give Jake Elliott his game check if he made the 61-yard field goal. Um, let me think of the score. I know we won by three, obviously, because it was going to go to overtime. Um – the score that yes game. it was with our um, it says the kick went in with zero seconds so i guess that isn't necessarily one second left i don't i know. i'm pretty confident it was because i remember watching it back i remember thinking that we were lucky to have a second i feel like unless i'm thinking of another play i feel like it was All like right. a really close call <laughs> they gave us the second left um, um I really don't know the score, though. It was one second left. At a boy. Um, the score. Let me try and think of the score. We won by three. I remember the Giants came back too. Like we were kind of, we were up big. They definitely scored in the fourth to tie it. Um, I'm. I really don't know the score though. I'm gonna guess like twenty four, twenty one. 27-24. Oh, that was my next close guess. That was what I was <laughs> Oh, that doesn't give you shit. I was what? close to score. I want that to be noted. My All score right, yeah, guess that, is close that to cancels out. That cancels out Dan's close score, too. Yeah. Is there any um, questions you can ask me and I can see if um... – Let's see. You haven't given me anyone who scored a touchdown that day. Okay. Um – 
So that was, we had LeGarrette Blonde. We had, we didn't have a Jai yet. Oh, Alshon scored a touchdown. He did not. No. <laughs> Is that a um, minus one? That's totally a minus one. <laughs> yeah, that's a minus one. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bad guess. Um, <laughs> no, we, stop throwing out guesses. Stop throwing no, them out. No, come on. I can guess. <laughs> All right. Elliot wanna, hit two field goals. Was... Elliot had two field goals. That's because he knew the score. <laughs> yeah, 27. Oh, or missed. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, he no, also I had three extra off. points. There could have been other ways. There could have been other ways. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm trying to think what happened in that game. Three home and away. Points. Oh, that was at that was a home game for the Eagles. Yeah. Um, Joel Embiid was in attendance. He was in attendance. <laughs> Is that a point? That's. A I'm pretty... giving that. He literally was 20 feet from me. I was at this game. Um, I'm trying to think of any scores. I can't think of the scores. Manning threw a touchdown, I know. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm not giving you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, th- that'll be it, I guess. If you could give me how many he threw. That's too risky. I don't think risky. I can I don't think I can come up with that. Wait, wait, wait. 2017, we won the Super Bowl. I have a feeling, I don't know, I don't want to submit this. We <laughs> okay. stake one in the NFL yet. No. It, okay, thank I'm not going to throw out the <laughs> You're helping back. your opposition here. All right, yeah. Ryan, you could, you could say what happened. I think – here, Tommy, are you still going to guess anything? Or? Uh, I'm done, I think. Yeah. Right. Okay. Was, was Rashad Jennings the running back, the main guy? Rashad Jennings. Or was this a year um, after? There was actually a tie for lead rusher that day <laughs> for the Giants. 22 yards each. Orleans Darqua and Paul Perkins. Oh, Orleans the or- Darqua and Paul Darkwa days. Okay, Darkwa like I said, 27-24 Eagles on a one-second left 61-yarder from Jake Elliott in Philadelphia. Uh, LaGarrette Blunt rushed for a touchdown. Ertz caught a touchdown. Odell caught a touchdown and then another touchdown. Sir Odell had two. Shepard caught a 77-yard touchdown to then go ahead. Who did? Shepard. Oh, wow. Corey Clement had a 15-yard touchdown. Oh. And then uh, Aldrich Rosas kick to make it 24-21, a Jake Elliott kick to make it 24-24, and then a Jake Elliott 27 Wow, I forgot we went down. Were yeah. both those Elliott kicks in the fourth? They were. The wow. first one was with 46 seconds le- or 51 seconds left from 46 yards. How did we get the ball? I don't even know that. We must have had a quick three now. I, I forget that I want to rewatch that game though. I, I gave up right. I gave up on the season after that game. Giants were 0-2 and, and then they Oh, I can remember that. The Eagles were 2 0 at the time. I don't know if that counts. They were. Okay. And... Pat, your game comes on December 2nd, 2018. We have Giants versus the Bears in week 13. Okay. Giants versus the Bears in week what? 13. Okay. So last year, last year was 1914 Bears, I'm pretty sure. Um, but the year before that, um, this might have been the game that, um, get your eggs out, Tom. Uh, <laughs> no, no. All right, so the Giants had a – oh, shit. This might have been the game that Chase Daniel was playing for the Bears. I think their starter was hurt. I think Trubisky was playing solid. I think the Giants won 30-27 to 27 in overtime. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember That's that That's two. All right, um, what are else you, happened? Are you making a quarterback submission or no? quarterback submission who oh. was the first who was the bears quarterback it, or it was the backup that? it was it was the backup and this is when the bears defense was dominant um i'm gonna say chase daniel was the quarterback chase daniel was the quarterback all right and then 
who who else would have been? I don't know who, who scored for the Giants. I mean, Odell had a rainy. I think the game was it was a rainy day, or it was foggy. Ooh, it actually tells me weather, and it does not mention rain. All right, fuck. Minus one. <laughs> Is that a minus right. one? That feels a little. I, Come you on, it's right. yeah. Okay, no, that, that would make sense. Shot. Rain or sun. It's rainy D- every time. Dan, we're, we're at a disadvantage because – wait, no, actually we're not because Ryan would look it up if we said any details about the game, but yeah, you knew right away for all the Eagles them. details. They got their Eagles yeah. fans. Um, I mean, this is – is this Saquon's rookie – yeah, Saquon's rookie year. I mean, the Giants, if it's December 2nd, I guess it's their – it's got to be their fourth or fifth win of the year. Or did they have six wins or three wins? I, I have no idea. No, they, they improved after. I'm I gonna can say it was tell their you what their record win. was after this game, if you have a guess. Um, after this game, I'd say they were 4-10. and 10. It was week 13. <laughs> Oh, week 13. So they already had their bye, so I guess three and nine. After this game. Yeah, three and nine. But, uh, no, they were four and eight. Oh, fuck. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't get anything else. I'm just going to lose points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 30 to 27 Giants in overtime. Stadium was MetLife. Oh, a uh, kicker. Kicker was Aldrich Rosas. Yes. Okay. Um, Who had the game winner? He did have the game winner. And it was it was definitely – it was more than 30 yards. I'd say – don't subtract points for this. I'm going to say it was somewhere around low 40s. It was 44. Okay. Yeah, that's mid-40. That's a mid-40 number. Either I way, wasn't going to give a point. Yeah, you don't get points for it. It's a mid-40. No, that's a detail. That's a yeah, mid one that you that's said, not a low Don't 40. take a point uh, away for this one. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that's fine. I did say that. Yeah. Um, are you done guessing? Yeah. Uh, so 30-27 overtime in MetLife. Uh, Ogletree had an eight-yard pick six. Oh, first – was that the first I actually um, okay, have right. a list of all the things that happened in this game. And it is quite, and this is why I thought it was fair because it wasn't as prominent as their games, but I figured it was memorable for a Giants fan because there was a 57 yard field goal. Odell threw a touchdown. Um, Odell threw Tariq Cohen threw a touchdown. A pick six by Alec Ogletree, a one handed interception from someone else. There was an onside kick recovery. Chase Daniel played as the backup QB. There was overtime. Chicago fumbled four times and recovered all of them. What and a game. <laughs> a, a, a defensive tackle got a rushing touchdown, and that was Akeem Hicks for the Bears. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that makes it three for Dan, four for Tom, two for Pat as we go into the playoff Score, score exactly was one? <laughs> I gave one. you a point for overtime and for score exactly. Score exactly for both teams. All right. All right. The scoring of this whole thing is a little bit iffy. I feel like this it should just go yeah. by off of what Ryan feels like was the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine. Whole, and like rather than having a set score. System. Okay. Dan, are you ready? No, I'm Dan. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um. Okay. Your game is the t- NFC 2018-2019 Conference Championship, Rams versus Saints. All right. Nikel Roby Coleman uh, walloped Tommy Lee Lewis at the end of the game for a non-called pass interference on fourth down, effectively ending the Saints season, mm-hmm. meaning the Rams did win. Um Right. I don't know what else I can tell you about the game. All right, let's go score first. It would have been a one or two point game. I oh, know because it was them driving to win it. Fuck. Can I steal? No, <laughs> I'm done. I'm gonna say the score was 21-23 Rams. No. Um. 
Drew Brees was quarterbacking that game, <laughs> as was Jared Goff. I can also tell you the coaches were shot. No, this is, come on, let me steal so too general. Let me steal some points here. Oh, he has I, zero, right? right. Or no, he has one for the uh, – Yeah. I, no. Yeah, that's all I got. Hey, Tom, I say, Tommy. Or what? I, I, you go, you go. Well, I don't want to – like, if you know this too, I don't want to steal this from you. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I just won't get points for this, but I can – I can tell you the game went to overtime and yep. Drew Brees threw a pick in overtime and mm-hmm. Zerlene hit the game winning field goal. Yeah. My God, I knew that. Uh, I'm going to say 27 24. And I think, and I know the Rams and Saints played earlier in the year and it was like 45 40 or something. It was an insanely high scoring yeah. game. And it was. It, it was 26-23 in New Orleans. Oh, the Rams shit. won on an overtime field goal. Um, Will Lutz had two to start. Then Garrett Griffin caught a pass from Drew Brees. Sewer line hit one. Gurley ran one in. Taysom Hill passed or got passed to by Drew Brees for a touchdown. Fucker. Igby had a one-yard pass for a touchdown. And Zuer line hit one. Then Lutz hit one. Then Zuer line hit two. The first one was to tie it with 15 seconds left, a 48-yarder. The second one, a 57-yarder to win it. Off Do the I get points for um, overtime, Drew Brees' pick, and the Zerlon kick? Mm-hmm. All right, Tom. So you are currently tied with Dan with a game to go. Um, wait, how am I tied with Dan? Is how ballsy you're going to be. Wait, how am I t- wait, wait, how many did Dan <laughs> get from that? He has four total. And how many do I have? Four from round one. but So I don't get any points for all those details? We decided no steals, I thought. No, you. there's no steals. What? I just get – okay. All right, well, Wait, so did he get a point or did he – Dan got one point for the Tommy Lee Lewis no call. Oh, yeah. It went, all right, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, hold on. Let me pull up all of the stats from this next one. It is the – uh, NFC 2018-2019 wild card Cowboys versus Seahawks. Okay, 20 what year? It was the 18-19 season. The playoffs are in 19. 18-19 season. Oh my god. Hit me when This was the ready. this was not last year but the year before. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> what round was this? Wild card. So the Eagles played the Bears in the wild card. And I was there to see that. So the Eagles won their game. I have a, I feel like the, I honestly don't know if I know the winner of this game. I think the Cowboys won the game. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, I'm going to take my one point. (laughs) Wait, I would like to quickly contest my score of only one point because if I got a point for the Tommy Lee Lewis call, do I also not get a point for knowing the winner? Oh, okay. So I should have two points. That's fair. We haven't been giving winner points. We've been giving four points. Yeah. Okay. A little more more detail. So the Eagles did not win their division – so the Cowboys won their division, so it was it was in Dallas. That is a point. Does that give me the points over? That is five. Um I might I might do a little showboating here. <laughs> okay. Um let me just give a score guess because it's no risk. I think the Cowboys won by a pretty like a ten point margin. I'm just gonna throw out I have no clue, honestly. Okay. Now, you know, I'll just call it. I'll just call it there. <laughs> it was 24-22. Oh, wow. Close um, are, are you done? I am done. 24-22. They have a game-winning field goal. No. Not for points. I just wanted to Oh, know. oh, oh. <laughs> I just said not for points know. after. <laughs> 24-22 in Dallas. Um. Maher capped things off with a three uh, field goal to go up 3-0. Then Janikowski hit two in a row for the Seahawks to make it 6-3. Gallup caught an 11-yard tutty. 
Wilson ran for a four yard and then they went for two and got it with a Mike Davis run. Zeke had a one yard touchdown. Uh, Prescott had a one yard touchdown to make it 24 14. And then uh, JD McKissick caught a seven yard pass from Wilson to make it 20. uh, And then Carson got the two point to make it 22 24, but the Cowboys held on. And that is how that ended. So Dan and Pat are in the hot seat. I'm safe. Which Pat needs two to tie Dan and three to pass. And his game is the AFC 2019-2020 Divisional Playoff Chiefs versus Texans. All right, so. (laughs) You're giving him a game from like three months ago? I thought his first round game was harder than both of your first round games. No, I'd be be fine if you went back a year because Dan Dan will be receiving the eggs. The question you got was the question you got. (laughs) All right, so the game started off. Texans started – I don't know if they were up 21 nothing or 24. Pretty sure it's 24 nothing to start. Um, I watched this game on my phone on my way back to school on the train. Did you um, get a point for that? I'm not giving a point for <laughs> Yeah, no. It was it was in Kansas City, of course. Um, they scored somewhere in the 40s. It was I guess I guess my best bet is 48 to 30 – it's either 31 or 34. I'll say 48-31. Um, that is not correct. Damn it. I would like to throw out there, I think the tiebreaker should be whoever can name the most former and current Buffalo Bills. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is right, that, so that I, side with them? Yeah, what I, I, I don't know what of those was guesses and what was just rambling. I gave him a point for Arrowhead. Winner? We did yeah, get I, a winner point for you. Yeah, I didn't get a winner point. Yeah, yeah. No, no winner point. I thought – And I, I said a, a main detail. The Texans started off he, 24-0. He did get the comeback. 24-0 is correct. I wasn't sure. You seemed to flip-flop. I wasn't going to tell you whether you were right or wrong. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that's two. So, yeah, we're tied. And then – uh, I mean, the Chiefs were the two seed, and the Texans were. Oh, Texans were the four; they weren't the three because Bills were the five, Titans were the six, and the Titans won. So, if the seeding gets any points, it was two versus four. Um, and then, um, do I need touchdowns? Damian Williams had a great game. Um, I mean, he had a great postseason, so that's a generality. I know Damian Williams scored at least a touchdown, so if a touchdown score. Um, Travis Kelsey scored I, – I don't – I don't want to bank on saying that it was the first touchdown. But I've, Are these touchdowns for plus or minus a point? Just thought, just wondering that. Um, if he is going to – guess whether a player scored or not and is wrong. Yeah, Travis Kelsey definitely scored. That is true. And I have five, so I don't have to say anything about Damian Williams, right? Uh, yes. I think Damian <laughs> Williams – can you correct me if I'm wrong? Did Damian Williams score three times in this game? Damian Williams had three touchdowns. Yeah, Travis I did. Kelsey had three touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had them both. We did a fantasy playoff challenge, and I had both of them. <laughs> and I had Mahomes. <laughs> um, that Saints Rams game. <laughs> All right, final scores: Dan with four, Tom with five, Pat with five. <laughs> we will see a great video in the days to come, uh, fellas. Thank you for uh, your time. Thank you to everybody for watching. That just about wraps us up today. Get your nut up. Yep. (laughs) Adios. I hate everything. (laughs) What's up, everybody? Peanut Gallery here. We have no Pat in attendance, but we have some subs. This is Eric and Eric. You know Tom. Um, Dan here lost our podcast challenge, so he will be getting pelted with 12 eggs. Um, 
Tom was kind enough to make them jumbo. So uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> this is gonna hurt so fucking bad. <laughs> oh my God, what is this? <laughs> All right, it's my turn. <laughs> this is why it pays to be the host. No risk, high reward. I have three left. Get over there. Let's go. Oh, boy. What the hell? Let's go, baby. All right. Alright, next butt. time someone else is getting punishment, they're gonna get their shit racked. <laughs> oh, How we feeling? Really Whoever threw it on my head, <laughs> <step up. laughs> he's bleeding. <laughs> oh my god, we're never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, I'm sorry you missed this. We, we, we racked up some injuries. This is what happens when you can't remember the Tommy Lee Lewis game. Safety today brought to you by. The, Home Depot. Oh the vintage really Home Depot college game day hat. I saw that. I expect if you're watching this, sponsor us. A little bit.